Hey folks, welcome back. Work continues on this Grunel chassis 6C. And since my last video, I've had the opportunity to get out here and get the electrolytic can capacitor unsoldered from the chassis and physically removed. It's just sitting here on top of the chassis. And just for reference, uh, it's supposed to be a wet electrolytic and it's as dry as a bone when I shake it very, very light. It's this 18 microfarad uh, here that you can see on the schematic. So um, let's take it over here on the bench and uh, cut this thing open. Get ready to restuff it. Hello all, welcome back. I've got the electrolytic can capacitor here inside my tubing cutters which are supported by a small vise here on the end of my workbench. So I'm going to try this for the first time. I'm actually going to try to open this can by actually using the tubing cutters in lieu of using a razor or a Dremel. So let's see what happens. I'm going to apply some, uh, just kind of some medium pressure here and I'm actually going to just rotate the electrolytic can capacitor. See what happens here. I'm trying to keep these seam lines here uh, to meet. I don't want to, again, apply too much pressure. There we go. Looks like I'm through already. Just rotate it around. I think the advantage of having me turn the actual electrolytic, it affords me the opportunity to be able to uh, kind of keep the cut lines uh, you know, where they need to be. Let me apply just a little more pressure here. And I think we're about all the way through. Okay, I'm going to stop video here just for a minute and I'll be right back. Let me get it outside of the vise here and we'll take a look at the cut. Okay, I've got the electrolytic can capacitor just sitting here on the bench now. And again, I've made my cut line using the tubing cutters here. So let's just pull it apart, see what we've got here. Good thing here you can see that it's completely dry and uh, came right apart. So it's like I got a fairly good cut here. Matter of fact, I may even reuse the screening material here just to keep the sections together. But uh, looks like I got a pretty good cut. There's, uh, heck, that's actually better than uh, I've had before trying to use a razor knife or a Dremel. So that's uh, that's pretty clean. I like the look of that. And again, I'll have to clean this other end up here just a little bit when I remove the uh, inerts here of the existing electrolytic material. So I'll be right back. Let me uh, let me kind of get this piece out here desoldered, and uh, we'll take a look at this uh, lower section here. Okay, I grabbed a, a pair of wire cutters here. Let's just uh, try to get this section right here removed. Should be able just to push this in. Oh yeah, cut this off. Let me watch the eyes. Just pull it through. Simple enough. So again, not, not bad at all here. I'm actually very pleased with this. I'll clean this up and then I'll look at how best to um, attach this piece here. I may actually just take these uh, sections here and bevel them in and then just slip this over or I may use the, uh, you know, the cardboard method or go back and use some of this screening material inside. Uh, that's probably the uh, best way to approach the uh, putting the two sections back together. So very, very clean. Again, others have probably used tubing cutters in the past. I just thought I'd give it a try. See if it was a cleaner method and procedure for uh, getting these cans apart. You know what I decided to do? I was looking at this closer and it looks like these pieces are going to come back together very nicely. So instead of using a piece of cardboard or reusing the screening material inside and I can always go back that route I'm actually going to 
just take a pair of flat pliers here and kind of create a bevel again bring this inside just working my way around the base of the electrolytic here and let's see I'm not sure I'm all the way around let's see if that's enough Oh yeah, just need just a little more, and I think I can actually get these two sections here to to stay together pretty well. Let me work on that just a little bit more off camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've got the electrolytic can capacitor here mated back together, the lower section here and the top section. And again, it's not secure, so I'll probably still... I think I'm going to take advantage of some of this uh, screening material that was in here and uh, use it to uh, better hold the two sections together. But uh, very, very pleased here with how the two sections go back together. Got a nice uh, seam line. And I can actually clean this up here just a little bit, but I uh, don't think it's going to be very noticeable by the time you get this thing back mounted on the uh, chassis. So uh, overall, pleased with this technique. I think I'll use this in the future as well. Okay, I'm back. I just wanted to give you a quick update here on the power transformer. I was able to get the rust off of the housing and get it cleaned up nicely and uh, spray some paint here on it. I've used this uh, before with good results. And it cleaned up pretty well. Uh, not perfect, but it looks a heck of a lot better than it did. And all the rust was removed before, again, applying the new coat of paint. So um, you see here I had it taped out not to um, interfere with the part number here on the back. And then, you know, one thing I said I was going to do is just double check this transformer again. So I will do that uh, briefly before inserting the transformer remounting it to the uh, chassis itself. So just wanted to share this with you. Let's get this thing back in the chassis here then we'll just take a quick look at the uh, the chassis of the radio with the transformer back in and also have the uh, tuning condenser uh, mounted back in the, uh, the chassis as well. So I'll be right back. Okay guys I'm back with you. I have the power transformer now reattached to the chassis. Uh, while I was doing the de-rusting, I also uh, knocked out the hardware itself and then coated it with some nice uh, paint as well. Uh, this is the uh, product that I used. I've used it in the past with good results. And regarding the uh, tuning condenser itself, you can see I've got it reattached now to the chassis. Uh, this old bracket was in really bad shape. Still some pitting on it. Um, I actually sanded it out, got the rust off, and hit it with some zinc paint, so uh, no, no rust should come back. I um, also took advantage and got the old grommets out and replaced those. I've got this nice assorted pack here and replaced those with these 7 sixteenths inch uh, grommets. All the electrical connections for the uh, tuning condenser are actually complete now, except for one that goes back to a uh, coil underneath that I need to tie in. This looks a little bit more tedious and time consuming. Uh, regarding the uh, rust removal itself on the chassis, I elected again not to paint the chassis, just do the rust removal. And again, I left this one-step metal prep actually on the chassis itself. It should act for a really nice uh, rust inhibitor uh, for a period of years. So we'll see again if I'm doing videos uh, down the road. We'll, we'll pull this thing back out and take a look at it and see if we have any uh, rust that's back on the chassis. So that's all I have for now. I appreciate you guys joining. I'll publish another video maybe within the next week or so. We'll get started on the electrical restoration itself, get these caps out, check all the resistors, fire this thing back up and uh, see if we can't get it returned to my uh, dad so he can stick it in the beautiful cabinet on this Crunel Chassis 6C. Thank you.